How's everybody doing this morning? Wonderful. I like the sound of that. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. You are are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup overflows. My cup overflows. That sounds pretty good, huh? Who who wants their, their cup to overflow? One way that we get our cup filled is through worship, right? But along the lines, and and I I think we're all guilty of it, we make worship about us. It's entertaining, and we focus on the, the, the sounds and the lights and the fog machines and the music, and was it good, and was it that, and did it make me feel good? But that's a wrong perception of what worship truly is. Worship is for him. What are, what, are we, what are we giving him? Are we worshiping him? Or are we worshiping ourselves and some characters upstage or a video or, or whatever? When we point the worship towards him, it's then at that point when the atmosphere changes and he fills your cup. When you make the worship about him. And one way to do that is to be thankful. An attitude of gratitude. So why don't we all stand up this morning. I want to chum the waters a little bit. Who here has something that they're grateful for? Big, small, the littlest thing, a big thing. Who? What you got? You need this? Sure. Grateful for relationships today. I remember a couple years ago, I didn't have any relationships that were worth anything. And today, I got relationships again with my family. I got relationships with my family here, with my church, people in the community, and I'm grateful for that today. Who else? Big or small? Um, Everybody knows me, and you know, I've uh, been through a lot of medical stuff, but God has gotten me through it with, <laughs> with uh, his blessings. And um, I know on a few of the times I didn't make it through the surgery, didn't, you know, my heart stopped. And he's brought me back. He says he's not through with me yet. I'm grateful for the peace, peace that uh, God's given me in my life. Rarely have a day now where I'm frustrated for the whole day. Stuff still, you know, gets on my nerves, but he's helping me work through things a lot quicker and uh, get a better understanding of, of why I'm going through it and just don't hang on to it. I don't get stuck in the moment and able to process through, and um, I'm grateful for that peace. Love y'all. You, you didn't have a, a lot of peace when we first met you, did No, sir. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, sir. Well, I got it over 10 years clean and sober, so that's good. The Lord has given me opportunities to serve others, and, his, uh, and it's just an endless opportunity. Um, to continue following him. So that's all also awesome and here in about a week or so will be one year since I got my uh, uh, My ticker fixed so I'm grateful for that because it's still working Nothing is shorted out in the lightning storms I'm thankful to God for my family and the family at church You are all blessing. Thank you We love you, Miss Camille. Now, if that doesn't...
get you going a little. We're, we're grateful for you, Mary. <laughs> Amen. I'm grateful that my family is taken care of and they're safe and um, I'm in a safe environment. And I'm around people that actually genuinely love me and care about me. And I'm thankful that I'm not so I'm I'm sober and I'm not uh, I'm not on drugs and alcohol and thankful that God's given me the strength to push through this. Amen. So we have a lot to be thankful for, right? We have a lot to be thankful for. We have a lot to worship him for. Amen. And I believe in return, he's gonna fill our cup. Amen. I believe these guys have some music here. Brother Jeremy, come on up here. Why don't you just share with us uh, what's been going on in your life and your, your personal life with uh, your wife and your kids and uh, so we can just join in and, and pray with you. And uh, then after that, we'll have the guys come up for uh, offering, have you pray for the offering. Because uh, I believe the Lord has been moving in your life and blessing you. All right, so why don't you just share with us uh, what's been going on there? Well, since being here, um, you know, my wife's been really supportive of keeping an open door with communication between my daughter and I. And, um, you know, she's done a, a real good job in supporting me that way. Um, they've been forced to uh, get our house cleaned up. Um, it actually hit the market today, so uh, I could use prayer for that, and uh, and also prayer for them to find some place to rent. Um, rent's gone up uh, to where it's kind of rivaling the the same cost as our mortgage. So, uh, you know, I just pray that the Lord moves in all that, that He continues to provide. Um, you know, she actually came up for a visit, which is a miracle. You know, that's all because of the Lord. Um, there's been an act of divorce for about 15 months, about a month ago, um, because she found out that I decided to stay here um, after I graduate in a month. Um, you know, uh, Lord put it on her heart to, to bring Charlie up, my, our daughter. So, um, and then she also uh, postponed the divorce. They didn't want to see the postponement because it had sat for a year. So she actually canceled the divorce. So. You know, it gives us uh, more time to pray. It gives me more time to pray the Lord, more time to uh, work in my heart and, uh, and help change me. And, um, you know, I just pray for restoration of my marriage. Love you guys. So I just, I just wanted to share that because, I mean, we, we hear it every day and we're with the guys and, and we're working with their, uh, their personal life and everything. But y'all don't always get to to hear the details and the other side, uh, but that's that's what we do. That's how the Lord uses this place uh, for restoration in the individual, but also in families uh, and, and in marriages. So that's that's what we're supporting. When we support, you know, I wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for that. So when we're supporting, when we're supporting our church, our tithes, our offerings, our prayers. That's what you just heard. That's what we're backing. That, that, that's what we're supporting. And I believe that's where the Lord's heart is. Uh, God is a God of restoration. Uh, whether it's uh, a couple or, or just the individual relationship. Uh, so let's keep praying for uh, Jeremy and praying for our ministry that we can continue the, uh, the work. And I believe the Lord will continue to bless us. Amen. Amen. We'll have the guys come up for offering. And uh, Jeremy, you want to pray for our offering today? Yeah. Well, Lord, we love you and we thank you for today. And Lord, just thank you for all the work that you're doing in our hearts, Lord. You're continuing to move uh, to mold us and teach us. But uh, also, Lord, you're working uh, in the things that we don't see. Um, so I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for blessing us all with jobs and just giving us the ability to give back to this ministry and to you, Lord. I pray that, uh, that you take this offering and multiply it and use it to build your kingdom. In your son's precious name we pray. Amen. have your Bibles, we're going to be kind of working out of 2 Timothy. 
three one. Why don't we all stand for the reading of God's word? Second Timothy chapter three, starting in verse one. But realize this that in the last days difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious, gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding on to a form of godliness, although they've they have denied its power. Avoid such men as these. For among them are those who enter into households and captivate weak women, weighed down sins and led by various impulses. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for the freedom that you do give us, Lord. We thank you for the freedom just to come in here and worship you today and to give you thanks lord prepare our hearts open our hearts may we hear your words in jesus name amen you can be seated would you say that i believe pastor dave mentioned this last, last sunday we were, i know me and him were talking about would you say that we're moving towards those those times? Would you say that we're moving towards those times or, or that we're in those times, those, those last days? I don't know exactly where we're at on, on the timeline. I don't, I don't believe anybody does. But I'd absolutely agree that we're seeing this start to unfold. We're seeing exactly what the Holy Spirit prophesied through Paul, through the Word, we're seeing it unfold right in front of our eyes, day after day. So the question that we should be asking our, ourselves is how do we survive? How do we, how do we survive in this place that we dwell? How do we survive? How do we survive in this, this place that we dwell, this, this, this world, this culture, this environment with all the crazy things going on. All, I mean, get on the news, look, all the, just all the stuff. We can sit here and talk about it all day long. As Christians, as children of God, how do we, how do we survive? And that's what, that's what I'm going to be talking about here for a, a little while. I'm kind of trying to put together a little series it's going to be spread out so it might not seem like that uh but it but it is uh because i believe i believe it's something that we really need to be praying about and looking looking at as individuals and also corporately of of, of how to survive but not only survive but prosper and, and be effective be powerful in these these times that we're in and these times that are, are coming ahead Right? How do we survive in this culture? How, how do we survive in this type of environment? And in the midst of all of it, hold true. Not just make it. Not, not just make it, not just go along with it, but how, how, do, how do we still be in the world and not, not of the world? How do we not compromise? That's what we've been talking about, not compromising. Number one, as an individual... First of all, me, personally, as an individual, you, personally, how, how do you survive? I, here's a little, little tip. Fix you first. <laughs> Start with you. We're trying to fix everybody else. Then fix your husband, your wife, your this, your that, that, the government, blah, blah, blah. Start with yourself. It always works better. We were just talking about that as a staff in the office. You want to change what's going on here? Start with you. 
quit blaming everybody else and uh, if I ran, uh, blah, blah. Start with yourself. Sometimes we can become very busy and very occupied worrying about saving everybody else. Saving and changing everybody else. Now, yes, there's a healthy side to that. And yes, we're called to be our brother's keeper. We're called uh, to live a life where we're accountable. Uh, we're, we're called to love our neighbor. Yes, all, all those things are true. But the enemy likes to get in there and take all those principles and twist them. And for us to get our priorities out of balance. And it becomes unhealthy. And starts to breed things like codependency and, and unhealthy relationships and things like that. So start, start with yourself. You know, a lot of times churches, <laughs> uh, in the name of uh, evangelism, which is a great thing, that's what we're called to do. But it can be so focused on evangelizing and saving all them people out there. Bless their hearts, all them lost people. How do we reach all them lost people? Well, let's start in here. <laughs> let's, you know, and it's comfortable. It can be comfortable to keep all the focus out there, which we do hold a position to do that, but it starts right here. It starts with me asking ourselves the questions Am I healthy? Am I planted? How is my family? How are my kids? How is my, how, how, how is my wife? How is my circle? My, my little circle right here. How is it? How, how healthy is it? How's the ministry? How is our church? These are all questions. The body of Christ, your local body. You know, you have inner circles, outer circles. You know, is it functioning properly? Is it healthy? Is your environment, is your circle, your crew, your clique, whatever you want, your posse, whatever you want to call it, are they healthy? Are the people you're hanging with and you're associating with, are they healthy? And how do we, if it is healthy, how do we keep it that way? If it's not healthy, let's get it that way. But if it is healthy... How do we keep it? How are we going to maintain it? How are we going to maintain this healthy, uh, healthy position? Because it's easy to, it's easy to get off track. It's, ve it's, very, it's very easy to get off track. It's very easy to let things get out of hand. Little things get out of hand, get out of control. Time gets away from you. You ever been talking to somebody and time gets away from you? Oh my goodness, we've been talking, we've been talking an hour. My wife does it every Tuesday night. I can, she's not in here, so I can say, right? Comes home at 10 o'clock. Where you been? Oh, time just got away from us. <laughs> <laughs> time gets away from us. The years get away from us. Your house. Is your house in order? Laundry gets away from us. Right? It doesn't take much. Just a couple days and things are out of, out of control. Your finances... You ever had your finances get out of control? Whoa, how did that happen? All right? Your health, your weight, your thoughts, your habits. A bad thought, a bad thought entertained will manifest into bad behavior. A bad thought, entertained, thinking, dialoguing with the devil, entertained, will turn into a bad behavior. A bad behavior, repeated, will turn into a habit. Bad habits, if not dealt with, turn into bad character. How did I get here? How... how how did I get to this spot? Has anybody ever asked, asked herself that question? How did we get here? That's the title of today's message. How did we, how did we get here? How did we get to, the, to this point? 2 Timothy 3.1, where we, where, where we started. It says, but realize in the last days, difficult times will come. 
but realize. The King James says this, no. Another version says, know this. Another version says, remember this. Another one says, you can be certain. NIV says, mark this. NLT says, you should know this. And I like what the message says. It says, don't be naive. <laughs> don't, don't, be, don't be naive. Don't be stupid if I can, <laughs> if I can say that. Don't, don't think that this isn't happening. Don't, don't fail not to, not to pay attention. It says that in the last, the last days, that in the last days difficult times might come. No, it says they will come. Like it or not, no matter what we, they will come. The word difficult. I like what the King James, the King James Version says, perilous. Perilous times will come. In the last days, perilous times will come. The, the word, the, the Greek word for that is halopeos. That word, the reason that word's important is because it, it, it describes the depth of what perilous means, what difficult means. We can just breeze by that and say, oh yeah, hard times, we're in hard times now. But that word, that word's only used twice in, in, the, in the New Testament. It, 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 it says ruthless, it means to harass, it means to be cruel, it means that it's hard to bear. It's used to describe animals that are unpredictable and uncontrollable. Un uncontrollable. It means fierce and ferocious. The other time that that word is used is when Jesus went over to uh, the island of uh, Gar Garcine and the demonic come out. It was used to describe that. That was the only time that that, that word was used. So it's, it's used to describe or to, to depict demonic behavior. It's that crazy. So in the last days, prepare for demonic forces, demonic behavior. Perilous, fierce, ferocious times. Exceedingly fierce, exceedingly violent, so dangerous, so violent. If you read that parable, when Jesus went over to the island, it said that the countrymen, the people, the people of that country were so fearful of these demonic uh, the, the, the demonics, that they wouldn't even pass by. They were scared. It was so bad. So that's what that word describes. That it's so bad that they were, they were scared to even pass by. It says the men had terrorized the region for so long that no one even considered it safe to travel down that stretch of road anymore. Those are the days. Those are what difficult days look like where we're too scared to even go down that road. I know some roads. I used to hang out on some roads like that. You just don't go down them. You're too scared to go down them. I'm starting to feel the same way just going in public, anywhere. To, to be honest with you, we went to uh, New Smyrna. Good little time. Family, beach. Ha ha. Leah, Leah says, oh my gosh, Dad, look. Oh. And look, and there's a guy in a bikini coming down the boardwalk with his buddies. I'm not talking about swimming trunks. I'm talking about a bikini. How did we get here? How did we, that's, it's not normal. It's not, how, how? Did we get here? How did we get to this point? And how do we survive? How do we survive? How do we, how do we survive as, as individuals, but as a church, as a disciple, as children of God? How do we survive in our families? Like, I'm sitting here thinking, okay. I mean, I, I didn't have to, I, didn't, I don't remember worrying about any of that when I was a kid. Nobody was trying to explain that to me. But I'm sitting here thinking, how, am I, how do I explain this to Leah. Of course, she already knows more than I do about the situation. It shouldn't be. How do we survive in a family like that? 
How do you raise your kids like that? How did we get here? What do we do? Someone that's putting their life back together. Someone that's in recovery. Some, somebody that's getting... How, how do you continue? If you're in recovery right now and you're getting your life together, you're going to step out there. How do you continue? How do you survive in that type of atmosphere? A little secret. Just because you change doesn't mean anybody else changes. Sometimes we can buy into the lie that since I'm changing and that I'm good, everybody else is going to be good. No. <laughs> no. Most of the world doesn't have time for your Jesus. Not interested in that. How do we survive in that type of atmosphere? Do we hide? Do we go underground? Close the blinds? Hide in our homes? Pretend it's not happening? Do we condemn them and shun them and write them off? People of the world, them pagans out there. How do we, how do we handle this? How do we, how do we handle it? Do we pretend it's not happening? Do we lay down or do we just accept it? This is the new norm. Yep, this is just how it is and just be okay with it. To each their own. What do, we, what do we do? So these are some of the things that in the future that I believe we're going to be talking about uh, for me personally. Isaiah 5.20. Isaiah prophesied about this. He said, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness. Woe to those people. Who substitute bitter for sweet. And sweet for bitter. Woe to these people that are exchanging truth for an error, truth for a lie. We're living in a time that uh, it's not anything that's really new under the sun. Like this has happened before. Genesis chapter 6, if you look at that, most of y'all are, are aware of that. It, it, we were already in those times. It said... Genesis 6, 5 said, The Lord saw, saw the earth, the wickedness of man. It was great on the earth. And that every intent of man's thoughts of his heart was evil. In Genesis. Every thought, everything that man was so... I mean, we've been here before. And worse. But there was judgment. There was judgment after, after, after that. Every thought of his heart was evil. How did they get there? How did them people get there? That's the question. We're going to keep it. How did we get here? Genesis 19, you go a little farther from that. Sodom and Gomorrah. The cities were overran by homosexuals. Overran completely. Homosexuality, wickedness. How did they get there? God destroyed it. Destroyed the whole city. How did they get there? All through the Bible, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, all through the Bible, you'll see this happening. And, and, and the going theme is, is God's people, each time we slowly separate ourselves from God. Each time we slowly start to compromise. Compromise, 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 compromise will always take us out of the presence of God. Every story, every land that was cursed, every one, it's the same pattern. Isaiah prophesied that there will be a day that darkness will cover the whole earth. Darkness will cover, cover the whole earth. We'll serve idols, anything that draws us from the presence of God, anything that draws us from the statutes of God. God's righteousness is an idol. Anything. Jesus. He prophesied, same thing. Iniquity will cover the earth. Matthew, let's look at Matthew. Matthew uh, 24. Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's talking about the signs of Christ, of his return. He's talking about the perilous times. Chapter 24, starting in 10. This is Jesus speaking, letters in red. He said, at that time, many will fall away. Many will fall away, and many will betray one another, and many will hate one another. 
There will be many false prophets will arise. Many will mislead many. And because of lawlessness, some versions say iniquity, because of iniquity is increased, most people's love will grow cold. That's so sad. Because of the evil, because of the iniquity, because of the lawlessness, no law, no standard, nothing. The people's hearts will grow cold. Their love will fall away. Verse 13, it says, but the one who endures, the one who endures to the end will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. Paul says the same thing. So we have, y'all see the pattern. Isaiah, Jesus, Paul, it's, it's the same thing all, all the way across the board. Paul says it in uh, 1 Timothy 4.1. He says, because, what's he say? 1 Timothy 4.1, it says, but the Spirit explicitly, clearly says that in the later times, some will fall away. Same thing Jesus said. Some will fall away from their faith, paying attention to the deceitful spirits and the doctrine of demons. The deceitful spirits, that word deceitful, it's delusions. The spirit of delusions. The spirit of delusions have been, they've been working their way into the minds of society from the very, from the very beginning. A spirit, a spirit of delusion. The demonic seeds are planted centuries ago where we're under a spirit of delusion, a spirit of denial, where we're operating and functioning in a lie. Here we call it fantasy. Man, we're in fantasy. We're in fantasy. It's a false belief system. It's an incorrect interpretation of reality. Have you ever sat and talked to somebody and they just I'm like, where is this person coming from? What, how do they, right? I've, I've been that guy. There's no reasoning in what's being said. It just doesn't even, it doesn't even make sense. We operate in a lie. We operate in a false belief system. We're seeing things that now, now that we run off theories. Well, I have a theory. Well, a theory? Theories change. Theories are false. We've got away from the truth. The Word of God. The Word of God doesn't change. Who cares about your theory? Who cares about science? Science is good. Science is helpful. But if it doesn't line up with what, what God says, keep your science. Keep it. We're running off theories, science. We're running off feelings. The world, the whole world. How does this make me feel? How do I feel today? That can be dangerous. Instead of relying on what God's truth says. What does the word of God say? Instead of running off, off our emotions. World War I. A little history. I got some little information for y'all today. So hang with me. World War I. World War II. That time. That, that era. Anybody remember that? <laughs> the Allied troops. When they went into the Nazi camps. The Nazi concentration camps. We've heard of this before. We've seen the, the documentaries. I think they got some pictures up there. The horrific things that they found and that, that they seen. And there's tons. We could talk about this all day, but I want to kind of go in on some of the experiments that were being done on these prisoners, on these prisoner, prisoners of war in the name of science. In the name of science or in the name of better warfare. They, they were taking these prisoners and some of the, some of the first uh, sex changes, abortions, trans, uh, transgender, all these things were being experimented in the name of science, in the name of better war to create a, uh, a dominant race. All right? And, when, and these, when these things were found out, when these things were, were seen, I mean, the world, most of the world went crazy. This is crazy. They were appalled. This is like something like Frankenstein stuff. They couldn't believe it. The, the stuff 
that was being going. It was mad science. So how, how did we get here? Where we're at today? Because what was once mad science and Frankenstein stuff, and the whole world se- seemed to think that it was uh, not permitted, it was cruel, it was uh, inhumane. How did we get from that to now it's normal? Now it's accepted. Now people are in line. Hey, switch me up. What? How do we get here? How, 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 how do we get here? How, Telling our kids they can be whatever they want? You can be whatever you want. No, you can't. No, you cannot. No, you cannot. We're telling kids they can be whatever they, they want. There was a, I was reading about an interview where, where this person, her style of parenting was when her child woke up, she asked the child, what do you feel like today? How do you feel today? Do you feel more like a little boy or more like a little girl? And based on what that child said is how the mother treated that child for that day. That's crazy. That's crazy. How did, how did we get here? You have a choice. You can be bigender, trigender, polygender, pangender, gender fluid. This is true. How, how did we get here? We're being bombarded by demonic delusions. Just as the, just as the word of God said we would be. We're being pulled away like a ship. Pulled away like a ship out to sea. Just pulled, sucked away with no moral compass of where to get back to. There's no, there's no, there's no reference point of, okay, this is right, point, point your way back here. There's no moral comfort, uh, compass. And if you say anything about it, then we're persecuted. We're persecuted, the church is persecuted, and now even are, are being considered part of the problem. Now, now you're part of the problem. There used to be an old uh, movie called Menace to Society. Menace, right? And, and they were the menace, the thugs were the menace to society. But now it has changed. And we're the menace to society. The church is the men. Them church people. Right? All of a sudden, we're the problem for speaking truth. We're the menace. We're the ones that don't get it. This is the delusion. This is the delusion. It's, uh, it's crept into our schools. It's crept into our, our government and even the church. Depending on what denomination, even the church, there's churches that are totally okay with the things that I'm talking about today. How did we get here? How did, how, how did we get here? We, we've got a, a plur, pluralistic, was the word, pluralistic view of everything, which means coexist. All get along. We're all go in the same way. All roads lead to heaven. And if we speak against that, then we're called judgmental, Overbearing, self-righteous, a dictator, or a cult. <laughs> Drink the juice, right? For speaking, speaking the truth. How did we get here? I know this isn't topics we usually talk about too much, stuff like this. But I just, I really feel that it's important to start equipping, not just talking about it, but equipping ourselves and our church for these last days equipping training i believe christ central church will continue to be a city of refuge i believe as things get darker and darker and darker we will be as a lighthouse we'll be a beacon we'll be a beacon in darkness to direct 
Those people that get pulled away, that get sucked out to, to sea, that get drifted and pulled away from God's truth. From God's truth. And as long as we stay in the presence of God, as long as we keep seeking it out, we keep seeking out His kingdom, seek, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, as long as we're letting the Word wash us and renew us and regenerate us, we shouldn't be surprised. This stuff shouldn't surprise us. We should already know about it. Nor should we be fearful or worried. Because God's not surprised. God's not su surprised. He's not confused. God's still in control. He's still gathering his church, his remnant. His promises still stand true. He gives us everything we need. 2 Peter 1, uh, 1 3 says it said he, he supplies everything we need. Uh, what is that? For live godliness. Everything we need. His promises, they do not change as long as we do not compromise. As long as we hold steady to the end. We talked about that in Re Revelations the last time. Let's go to Revelations. I want to go back to that where we, where we come from. Where we were talking about compromise. Revelations chapter 2. Revelations chapter 2. Jesus was talking about verse 12 to the church of Pergamum. We went over this last time. Starting in verse actually 13, he says, I know where you dwell. I, I know where you I know where you dwell. You dwell where Satan's throne is. And we talked about this for a long time, but but Jesus was affirming them that I know what's going on in your community. I know everything that you're exposed to. I know, but and you still hold the faith. You you, you still hold the faith. And that's exactly what we have to do. We have to still hold the faith. We have to still hold true to the gospel, true to God's word. We have to, what's the word say, gird our loins with, with truth, right? And not compromise. And the promise is, he says, I'll give you hidden manna. I'll give you everything you need to sustain yourself. I'll give you supernatural substance. If you stay connected to the vine, John 15, stay connected to the vine. Do not compromise. I'll give you everything. I'll give your church everything. I'll give the remnant everything it needs to make it all the way to the end. It's no different today than it was right here in Revelations when Jesus was speaking to the church of Pergamum. But there's no room for compromise. He says that in chapter 2. He hates compromise, right? Now, if you look in verse 14, Revelation 14, it says, Jesus rebukes them. He says, I have a few things against you because there's some of you that hold to the teachings of Balaam who kept teaching Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and, com and commits a, of immorality. We talked about this, but I want to remind you what that was about. King Balak asked the prophet Balaam to curse Israel. He, w he wanted them to curse, and the prophet could not curse Israel because God had blessed Israel. So he could not, but what the prophet did do was teach them how to lure, lure them in and how to compromise. How, how, how to compromise and to get the men of Israel to come in and start having small compromises with the women, with the harlots, and then to sacrifice with idols. Jesus says, I hate this. I hate this ty type of teaching. I hate this type of compromise. Uh, and, and there will be a ju judgment. Where did them people come from? Where did them people come from? The, this King Balak and I think Mobanites and the Ammonites, all these people that were mad at Israel and wanted Israel to die. Where did these people come from? What was their problem? Where, where did they originate from? I'm about to connect some dots here. All right? The Abonites and the, the Moabonites, they all come from an incest relationship. 
a compromise. They originated out of an incest relationship. Two daughters slept with their father and created these types of problems. How do you get there? Right? How do you get there? The, two, the, the older and the younger daughter slept with their father, got their father drunk to carry on their bloodline and slept with their father. That was their reasoning. How do you get in a cave drunk with your father, sleeping with your father? How do you get to that point? Oh, that's all. Oh, that's crazy. But it's, these things still happen today. These same very things still happen today. Small compromises, after small compromises, after small compromises. The man that was in the cave, the man that was drunk, his name was Lot. I don't know, has anybody ever heard of Lot? He's in Genesis. Lot was the father. Lot was the man in the cave with his daughters. Where did Lot, how did he get into a cave? If you look in Genesis, we ain't got time to go through the whole, the whole story. But in Genesis 13, it talks about Lot. Lot was Abraham's nephew. Lot walked with Abraham. In fact, in Peter, it talks about Lot being a righteous man. And he walked with Abraham. Now, we know how Abraham was. How did he get from a righteous man walking with Abraham to drunk in a cave sleeping with his daughters? Well, how do we get to the places that we found ourselves? It's the same, it's the same thing. It's, it's the same thing. Small compromise after small compromise after small compromise. If you read the story, Abraham and Lot... They were very uh, wealthy. They had many herds, many tents, a lot of livestock. They traveled together. They got into an argument because the land wasn't uh, fruitful enough to supply all their, their, their needs for their livestock. So they, they got in a little argument, and they had to split up. I'm paraphrasing here, but they had to, had to split up. Lot went one way. Abraham went another way. Lot put his eyes towards Sodom. Lot put his eyes to where the land was good, the things were good, and the word says he moved his tent towards Sodom, towards Sin City, towards the wickedness. Something caught his eye, and he moved. And it says he moved his tent all the way to Sodom. He took his family, he took his livestock, he took everything, and he moved right in to Sin City. Got right up in the middle of it. In fact, the word says when they came to find Lot, they found Lot sitting at the city gates. The people that were sitting in the, the city gates were the leaders. They, they, they were the leaders and the councilmen. Lot was in with them. He was in. He was sitting at the gate. He had done went from a righteous man to hanging right there at the gate in Sin City with the sodomites, homosexuals. How do you, you see the progress? Move the tent, move a little. Oh, what's going on over there? You keep snooping around. You keep riding around town looking. You'll find what you're looking for. Kept moving his, kept moving his tent. We know the story of Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels came. The Lord sent the angels uh, to destroy it. Lot actually offered his daughter, daughters up uh, to, to these Sodomites. They, they were pledged to marry these Sodomites. When the angels came to destroy, destroy the city, it says he hesitated. It had a draw. There was something. Yeah. You ever been doing something you're not supposed to and you know it's time to quit? Well, there's just something. <laughs> there's just something that just draws you. Right? Even if it's eating Oreos, man, just one more. <laughs> just one more, right? There's just something. Don't even look at the bag. Because you know you're going to eat one. I remember being in my addiction. People trying to pull me out of my addiction. I'm just like, it becomes your love. It becomes your lover. There's a draw. There's a demonic draw. And it says when the angels tried to take Lot out, he hesitated. He didn't want to go. They literally had to take him by the hand and drag him out of there. They told him not to look back. His wife, same way. Also a draw. She looked back. She was turned to a pillar of salt. 
They led, they led out, of, out of Sodom and they headed out to the mountains. Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19, starting in verse 30. It says, Lot went up from Zor and he stayed in the mountains and his two daughters with him. And he was afraid to stay in Zor and he stayed in a cave with his two daughters. That's how he got in the cave. It was a slow, gradual, small compromise after small compromise after small compromise. Then the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there's not a man on earth to, to come into us at the manor of the earth. Come, let us have our father drink wine, and, and let us be with him, so we may preserve our family through our father. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went and lay with the father, and he did not know that she lay down with him when she arose. On the following day, the firstborn said to the younger, Behold, I lay last night with our father. Let's make him, make him drink wine tonight also, and you go lie with him. And then we'll preserve our, fam, our family through our father. So they made the father drink wine that night, and the younger arose, and they lay with him. And he did not know that, that he lay down when she arose. Thus both of the daughters of Lot were with child by their father. The firstborn bore a son called Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. The younger, she also bore a son, called his name Benamiah. He is the father of the sons of the Ammonites. Do you see the connection? All the way from Genesis, all the way to Revelation. Jesus is, is speaking, speaking of, of this evil this evil people, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the people. And do you see how it progressed? Throughout the whole Bible of where it come from. Small compromise after small compromise after small compromise. Generation after generation. The seed that we plant now is going to bear fruit in the future. The things that we're compromising now are going to bear fruit in the future. Jesus hates this. He says it in Revelation. He hates Compromise. Hates it. See, this went on and on. So how did they get there? How, how did they get there? What if, let's just pretend for a second, what if, what if he would have cleaned up his mess when they got in an argument? When Lot and Abraham got in an argument, what if they would have cleaned up the mess and worked things out and handled things a little, a little different? I don't know, might have, might have played out different. What if he would have seen the wicked city and as a godly man say, I'm not pointing my tent towards that. I know what that's about. I'm not taking my family towards that. I'm not raising my kids like that. I'm not going to expose my wife to that. I'm not going to expose my kids to that. I'm not going to raise another dysfunctional generation. The dysfunction stops here, right? That's the part we keep raising and raising and the generation after generation after generation, and it's hurt after hurt, and it's dysfunction after dysfunction. You think, how did the daughters make such a crazy decision? They were raised that way. Their father raised them in a homosexual town and pimped them out, basically. Why wouldn't they make that decision? Your kids are watching you. Your community is watching you. People are watching you. It, it, it's not too far-fetched. How did we get here? It's, it's really simple. It's really clear how, how we got here. So, if you've heard anything today, out of all of that, know that compromise... Compromise fuels and empowers the spirit of delusion. We're under, under a demonic attack that's going to keep going and keep going, and compromise is always used to fuel that. So as an individual, as a church, we, we have to put a, put a stake in the ground and say that it stops here. 
I cut it off here. I don't care what my parents did. I don't care what my family did. I don't care what my background is. I don't care what the first part of my life looked like. I don't care. I don't care what I did yesterday. Today, I have an opportunity to bring Jesus Christ, allow the Holy Spirit to do something different and to have a different outcome. Amen? We have the power to do that. You want to change the world? Start with you. You want to change your cities? Everybody, we've got these big plans, but it starts, it starts with us. Playing church is not going to work anymore. The times are these perilous times. Again, it's not going to work no more. A lot of the things that we've done, and da, 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 and they look good, and da, 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 and the Facebook, and I, it's going to get, that, that stuff ain't going to work no more. It's, it's going to be shake, rattle, and roll, baby. We're, we're already seeing it. Keep playing church. So the next question. What is my part? I'm asking myself that. I ask that you ask yourself that. What is your, what is your part from the days ahead? What is your part in this? How, how are you going to allow the Lord to use you in these last days? All right? As far as we'll talk right, right here, as far as here, how can the Lord use you in your area? In your place of, uh, what did I say this morning? Place of influence. We all have a place of influence. Your work, your community, your friends, your, how, how are you going to allow the Lord to use you? How can you be part of killing this, stopping this? How can you be a light? We're going to end with this. Isaiah 60. And this is, this is hopefully going to position us for this next little, like I said, kind of call it a series of how do we survive in the land that we dwell. You know, the, the beautiful thing is, like Jesus said in Revelations, I know where you dwell. Jesus knows what's going on. So it's okay, as long as we're with Jesus. He's not caught by surprise. Isaiah chapter 60. It says, Arise. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness will cover the whole earth. We said that earlier. Darkness is going to cover the whole earth. Jesus said iniquity is going to fill the whole earth. Paul said the times are coming, the last days are coming. There will be no, there's none righteous, no, not one. Darkness will cover the whole earth, and the deep darkness of all the people. But the Lord will rise upon you. And his glory will appear upon you, and nations will come to your light. Nations will come to your light, and kings to your brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes round about, about and see. They'll gather together, and they will come to you. And as I said earlier, I believe that that's, our, that's, that's, what, that's what we've been, and I believe that's what we will continue to be. A city of refuge, a light. We're called to be a light. A light, a city set on a hill. So what is your individual part? What is your purpose in that? Why don't we all stand? What is it today that's keeping you from being that? And maybe you already are. Maybe you already are. How can you enhance that? How can you continue that? How can you allow the Lord to continue to use you or to begin to use you? What do you have in your personal life? What small compromise in your personal life needs to be let down? What do we need to do to allow the Lord to make us into a living sanctuary? Amen? This altar is open. Amen. Well, thank y'all so much for coming out. Y'all have a blessed week. Y'all go out and be a light. Amen? Love y'all. Have a good day.